All right, we're live. Welcome everybody back to the official Get Ops the Planet stream. Uh, I'm already here. I've got my Argo mug, mm. some lovely coconut Lacroix. I'm uh, recovering from Europe. Welcome all of you from who are having a good morning. I hope for those joining in the U.S. and for all of my new European friends who I met last week at KubeCon and ArgoCon in Amsterdam. Uh, hopefully you're having a wonderful evening and uh, this is a great stream for you. So today we have a special treat. We're going to be talking about S-bombs. There's been a lot of interest in S-bombs recently, especially at KubeCon. There's a lot of discussion about it in the U.S. We're actually having laws mandating this. So we're going to get into that soon. Let me take off my jacket, show off my, uh, show off my Argo swag. Look, was able to give a lot of these t-shirts away last week at uh, KubeCon and uh, glad so many people were so enthusiastic about that. I just wanted to thank everybody who came and said hello and uh, many of you who you know follow the stream or you follow uh, CodeFresh or you've, you've joined for GitOps certification or some of this other stuff we have out there. It was really cool to have so many of you come up to me and say, hey, I, I really appreciate the work that you guys do. That is uh, you know warm and fuzzy heart, uh, felt great. And I even had somebody come up to me and uh, start complaining. They actually came in with the complaint. They said, hey, I've got to talk to you about that configuration you gave us. And I said, who are you? What? I didn't give you any configuration. I don't owe you nothing. And uh, they came back and they said, yes, I followed your tutorial on how to deploy Docker images properly. And I used the, the big Ubuntu one that you said to use. And I just started laughing because, of course, they were referencing uh, an April Fool's joke where we had people deploy a 50 gig Docker image. <laughs> so that really made my week. I was, I was thrilled about it. But without further ado, I want to introduce our special guest. His name is Christian Hernandez. And Christian Hernandez is, of course, a GitOps the Planet alum. Uh, he actually started this show. And uh, he offered to come back on and to demystify S bombs for us. Welcome, Christian. Thank you, thank you, Dan. That was a, a great intro. I, I'm still kind of um, still kind of jet lagged from uh, from from Amsterdam. I don't know about you, um, but uh, but that that whole intro kind of like hyped me up again. I, I started yeah. remembering. Yeah, so I remember all the conversations, all the cool things. It was like the first KubeCon in a long time where it actually felt like a KubeCon. Um, you know, ever since, um, you know, coming out of, of COVID-19 and all that stuff, we had some KubeCons and, you know, started to get like, you know, the engine kind of warmed up, but it wasn't, you know, completely there. But uh, seeing the success of ArgoCon at, um, in, uh, in, you know, when it's co-located, right, at, at KubeCon, um, I'll let you make the joke about uh, <laughs> about uh, KubeCon being collated with, with ArgoCon, but it was, it was really cool. <laughs> it was really cool to see all of that. Um, really cool to like reconnect with everyone. I know the event was sold out. It felt like a KubeCon. It felt like it was sold out. I had a bunch yeah. of uh, amazing conversations there. So thank you. Thank you for having me back on. Uh, it's good. It feels good to be back on. Absolutely. And 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 I see you, you've you brought your uh, GitOps guide to the galaxy. This is, of course, yes. the show you started after you abandoned us on GitOps the Planet. Yes. You were like, you know what? <laughs> you can have the planet. I'll take the galaxy. galaxy. I thought that was a smart That's move. Right. Little yeah. checkmate. Yeah, yeah, little, little. Maybe next, the next one is uh, get um, you know, something have to do with the universe. I don't know. I'll, 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 <laughs> I'll think, I'll think, I'll think of something. In perpetuity that. throughout time and space. Uh, yes, and exactly. Exactly. Uh, yeah, no, it was, it was great. And actually, I, I was kind of thinking, um, it would have been nice actually just to do like a post KubeCon wrap up show, but we yeah. had already planned on doing the S bomb, so maybe we'll, maybe we'll do something uh, kind of a post KubeCon wrap up. Uh, of course, coming up. GitOpsCon North America. So maybe we can mention this before uh, and then we'll get into S bombs. But GitOpsCon North America is going to be happening in Vancouver in two weeks. I'm going to be there. Christian is going to be there. And Christian, I think, didn't you co chair that whole event? From, uh, oh, for uh, GitOpsCon, yes. yes. I feel like so you made that whole thing happen. Yeah, yeah. So, so for Vancouver, um, so for those of you who don't know, um, GetOpsCon and and the, the CDCon, right from the the CD Foundation, we kind of like joined forces, and um, and we're gonna have a joint um, 
I guess, kind of conference in Vancouver, right? Co-located with Open Source Summit um, as part of Open Source Summit in Vancouver. So that'll be uh, May 8th and 9th, right? And yes, I did co-chair that. I was uh, representing the, the good folks at um, the GetOps Working Group there. And so that was, that was a lot of fun, a lot of hard work, um, a great program. Dan, you're going to be there. You're going to give a talk. Yeah, so that, I'm giving gonna a be, talk. Uh, Costas gonna really is going to cool be there thing. giving a talk. It's going to be an all-star affair. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. We're 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 all be there. So the fun is not stopping, right? Like we just oh, got back. Yeah. And I'm gonna now do the Argo to... update because uh, we're yeah, doing a graduated exactly. projects update. So I'm also doing the Argo update, which will be a lot of fun. Um, and uh, we just got a shout out from Tolga. Loved our GitOps sessions. Appreciate it, buddy. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, okay. So today's topic is S bombs, and everybody, please feel free to throw in your questions. Keep those keep those coming. We appreciate them. Um, so, uh, I think we should start this actually kind of, um, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll start this very, uh, simple in explaining what S bombs are. And I'm going to play, yeah. you know, I'll play interviewer here a little bit uh, and let you, uh, let you share your knowledge here. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and for those that, uh, that were at ArgoCon, this is kind of a, a, an expansion of the talk that I gave there. Um, you know, talking about like the relation between like GitOps and security and because it's all related, right? So, you know, GitOps is, you know, a way, you know, ha has um, has been the way, right, to do CICD, cloud native way, right? We all love um, uh, uh, GitOps and Argo, right? And, you know, it, it, I, I don't have to... Um, I don't have to talk up <laughs> uh, too much about Argo and GitOps on, 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 this, uh, uh, on this stream here, so... Um, but, um, you know, taking a step back and thinking about like security in general um, and, you know, talking about um, security, like the S-bomb has been becoming, I don't want to say like uh, the latest buzzword, but it's been, you've been hearing about it a lot, right? And so S-bomb, uh, for those who don't know, are, uh, it just stands for the software build of materials. Right, so a bill of materials is essentially a, a lot of people call it like the ingredient list um, that you see like when you buy something off the shelf, right? You buy something off the shelf uh, for, at your grocery store. I always say a uh, a can of pasta sauce because just because who doesn't love pasta sauce? Um, <laughs> I know I have a few, you know, in, in my cupboard, but it's essentially um, you know the it, when you buy you know a can of pasta sauce, it tells you all the ingredients and all like the information that went into making that pasta sauce. So a nest bomb is essentially the ingredient list that you use to make your application, right? So when you're developing your application. Let's say um, you're developing uh, something in, um, you know, Node.js, right, in your packages.json file. Or if you're doing something in Go in your Go.mod file, right, those, um, you know, you're pulling in uh, different dependencies from all over the place, right, from, you know, npm.org or, you know, from GitHub or something like that to build your application. So when you build your application, an SBOM is basically a, you know, machine-readable you know, format of what went into your application your and your application as a whole, right? Not just your individual module that you're working in, right? Like not your individual microservices, but maybe as a whole, um, what went into building that application. So from like a high level, you can think of it as an ingredient list, the label on your pasta sauce that tells you what went into it. Same thing for your application, a label, um, a list of ingredients that went into what made your application. Yeah, and I think uh, these th S bombs have been around for a long time. I mean, um, mm -hmm. Linux was doing S bombs because uh, you had all these open source components being brought together, um, but they've really recently become more important. I think because of containers. I think it kind of used to be that. Mm -hmm. uh, you would develop your application, but it was sort of isolated. You didn't really think about the underlying packages and software as part of the application that you shipped. That stuff yeah. was on a node that was managed by infrastructure team. If you wanted additional packages or dependencies put onto those nodes, you had to work with your infra ops team and get approvals and go through security and all this stuff. And it was, it was sort of complex to, to manage. And then when containers came around, it was like, hey, man, I can just build a container. I can shove whatever I want in there. And you just deploy the container and it's got all my stuff in it. Don't worry about it. Uh, and that sort of shifted the ring of power 
towards the developers a little bit more. And so the infrastructure people weren't holding back packages and that's good for developer productivity, but from a security standpoint, it's like, Hey, you're including packages from some random, you know, repo on the internet. We don't even know who those people are. And there have been attack supply chain attacks where folks have uh, created packages and injected malware. And then it's like, Hey, if I can just get you to, you know, put this part of your build process, um, now I've got a, a way into every place that's being deployed to. This has happened with NPM a couple of times. There's mm -hmm. been some different uh, uh, supply chain attacks that have happened there. So with with the cloud native world, it seems like it's become a lot more important. And then you were saying in your talk, and I think this is good for people to be, know about, that this is actually going to be mandated under an executive order uh, in the US. So this would apply to, I assume, government agencies only, but I expect that we would see people in the private sector starting to follow suit as well. Yeah, yeah. And that's, I think that's really, really how um, uh, things usually start, right? Like there's like a, a government mandate and then then it starts bleeding over into things like financial services, things over like, mm -hmm. like, OK, you know, that's kind of like a good idea. And then it's slowly starts bleeding over to, um, you know, like e-commerce or whatever. Right. Like it's just it's cert it certainly starts to bleed over. Right. There's an executive order. It's like, OK, we're going to need S bombs for everything, everything that goes into our infrastructure. We, we need to know what's running there, what's being built. But also there is a um, um, there's something in, in, in Senate committee. Um, you, you can Google it. It's called a Securing Open Source Software Act of 2023. So um, that kind of takes the executive order kind of um, and extends it a little bit because now it not only is an executive order, but now Congress wants to kind of make it the law of the land, kind of want to make it here in the U.S. to where, um, uh, the, you know, government now wants to kind of punish. Uh, there it is. Um you know, it's basically wants to, uh, I guess, I don't know, I don't know how to say um, punish, but more like hold companies liable for bad cybersecurity practices. Mm. Right. And so in this, um, so it's no longer um, something that is, you know, oh, okay, like something that we can kind of ignore. Um, it, it's always been kind of, I, I, I kind of think of like security and like DevSecOps and that kind of thing more kind of like um kind of how we're like CICD and devops was kind of like it's kind of like before developers would throw stuff over the wall and things would get pushed back and that's kind of like how we felt about security right it's kind of like all right you know security will scan it and then they'll kick it back but now it's it's becoming more important it's becoming like okay now we're the company's gonna be held liable um you know and you know congress here in the u.s wants to you know hold companies liable for bad security process practices so now it's you know we have this whole idea i made the joke during my presentation we had this whole idea of shifting left we're like no we're actually now being dragged left like we're <laughs> yeah. being dragged there like now it's not even a choice now like we're being dragged there by some of these things and so um you know that i think all of this you know coming to a head uh, containers right being um um, you know, the, the explosion of containers, explosion of Kubernetes, uh, this massive adoption, all this automation adoption. Now, um, you know, now it, I think it's because of that S bombs has been becoming like, um, more and more, uh, I don't want to say buzzword, but you've been hearing about it a lot, a lot more and a lot more, a lot of companies offering S bombs, um, from, you know, I think, um, GitHub now you can generate S bombs, um, from GitHub directly oh okay cool I yeah didn't even know it, the it EU sounds like there's going to be a similar law in the eu uh so this i don't know if this is these haven't passed yet but just early warning like this feels kind of like the next gdpr like i don't know how many of you that are listening when gdpr became a thing it became like an all hands on deck we have a lot of a lot of work to do to make sure we're compliant and meeting these standards uh and so I don't think we're necessarily going to focus on the wisdom of these laws. I'm not, I didn't, I haven't read yeah. them or anything, but uh, when it comes to S bombs themselves, um, we talk a lot about it as if it's a single standard, but it really isn't. There's actually several competing formats uh, and standards for S bomb. And, and technically to have an S bomb, you could just have like a text file that you dumped information into. I mean, it doesn't need to be necessarily more complex than that. Is there 
is there standardization coming? Is there a consensus? Um, I know there's one that comes out of kind of Linux lineage. Uh, have you seen any kind of movement towards a single standard for those formats? Yeah. So, um, so really the, the two big ones, um, that kind of like have floated to the top, um, are, uh, SPDX and Cyclo DX, right? Those, those are kind of like the two big ones that have, um, kind of, uh, risen to the top. I know, I know at, at Red Hat, we've, uh, we've used both, um, for various reasons, um, you know, internally for our own systems, um, but those, those are two, two of the big, big standard formats, um, that have, you know, kind of risen to the top. I do, I do think that, um, what's really cool about it is that you can convert from one to the other. Mm. So it's, uh, it's, I, I think, I think it's going to happen. What, what happened with, uh, like YAML and JSON, like it's just, the, there, so it's going to keep on existing forever. It's just, it's just going to keep existing and people are going to have to like, um, convert from one to the other. So I think um, um, I know from like kind of some of the projects I've been working on, Cyclone DX has been um, the one that we've been using um, for, for my particular one. But I, I've seen SPDX out there as well. Yeah, and I thought SPDX was actually more popular, but maybe I have it backwards. Because I thought, wasn't SPDX kind of uh, what Linux like core was using? Yes, yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. What like the the... I, I I believe you're right. See that I that I don't know. That, that would so, yeah. push a de facto standard just because Linux is everywhere and everybody would be like, oh, if I can, you know, I need to be able to format with that. But I guess that hasn't happened. And and yeah, you're right. Um, GitHub does now have built in the ability to generate uh, your S bombs and um, maybe worth worth mentioning. Oh oh, it's tied to. Hmm. I thought sharing was tied to the window, not to the tab. All right. Um, so, so yeah, you can generate these S bombs uh, uh, automatically in GitHub, and and it makes sense that this is a GitHub, uh, you know, issue because it's it's checking all your code and things. Though um, it may not necessarily be complete because I don't know if it checks like what the Docker file is downloading, for example. So if you if you're building a container and you're actually relying on, let's say Ubuntu. Mm -hmm. Well, that actually, ha I mean, that's going to have like 7,000 different things that you need to add to your SBOM technically. So um, yeah. I don't know if it's able to do that, but um, brand new. I mean, this is this is as of uh, less than a month ago. Uh, and of course, you know, if you're using CodeFresh, you can you can upload and attach these SBOMs onto an image um, and have it tracked wherever it goes. And that's, that's kind of actually something else that I wanted to talk about with you is um, there's been an accusation that SBOMs are a little bit security theater uh, just mm -hmm. in terms of, measuring stuff um what's your take on that yeah i it's it's kind of you know some of these formats have been around for a while but it, it is um it, it's been it's still an evolving space and so what what i think is that um uh it it is a little bit kind of like i don't know if it if any if, you, if you've seen dan if you've seen the movie um pirates of the caribbean or if oh, anyone out yeah. there seen it's in the pirates of the caribbean and there's like a scene where Jack Sparrow has his jar jar of dirt, and because it like you know for for whatever reason he thinks it's gonna protect him from Davy Jones, right? Uh -huh. And so so he's like always just kind of like hug. So like I I think some people are like kind of just like hugging onto this idea of like like s bombs. It's like that's you know okay I have my s bomb so like I I should feel okay now. And it's it's really not like any particular tool is like you can't buy security right off the shelf let me let me have my, my here my, my good man can I have what please have one security off the shelf right yeah it, it, it it's part of a bigger like ecosystem right it's like security is a practice right not a thing um and, well, and uh i mean let's let's game it out for a second let's say i've got my s bombs being generated i'm attaching them to my images let's say mm -hmm. even i'm using code fresh i'm tracking it all the way to where it's deployed and i can look these things up um if I'm an attacker mm -hmm. uh, and I'm able to inject some kind of code or something, uh, either from through Git or uh, some other, you know, maybe maybe I've I've compromised one of the packages. Um, the S bomb isn't necessarily going to help me in the moment. It's mm -hmm. more going to help me later when the discovery yeah. has happened to say like, oh, I need to find everything that has this component. At least it's listed in the S bomb, so it's not necessarily going to prevent mm -hmm. 
a security yeah. issue, but it will help you remediate a security issue, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's really helpful for like triage, right? Or for like, um, you know, you're you're trying to see, okay, like we have, you know, with with your specific example, you know, we have like this version, and maybe like the SHA doesn't like match exactly. I'm like, oh, okay, like someone injected something, um, and that and that's like one thing that you can use, um for sure, like to, for, to help with, with the triage, right? Like, like you said, it, it's not going to like, it, you know, it's not your jar of dirt, right? Like it's not, it's not going to like prevent anything. Um, but it is definitely going to help you, um, you know, I guess in the remediation process for sure. Yeah. And you can at least start to be aware of, I mean, p most people probably aren't aware of how much software they rely on to deploy their app. They're like, Oh, I wrote this app. And it's like, yeah, yeah you wrote, 0.1 percent yeah. of the code that is running to make your app run <laughs> yes and, uh, yeah, yeah. Else, you know it was from the community it was from open source was from these other modules um coming over to a question we got a question from jonathan who says cool sessions folk cool session folks what kind of wisdom could you share when it comes to using tools such as sbddx and adding s bombs and manifests eg config maps deployments for auditing compliance and runtime verification um i personally kind of have a revulsion to the idea yeah. of sticking these into config maps or as annotations or something what what do you what's your take uh, yeah here yeah me? yeah I, I i wouldn't do that either right so like it's it's kind of um i, I almost have a revulsion as well uh, <laughs> I, I i i would yeah i wouldn't um you know th those are um so a lot of what goes into an s bomb are things like how the component was built so you may not know how your dependency was built. I mean, you just have the information of what they give you, but you have information about how your application was built. And this includes the, uh, specific information about your environment, right? Your build environment um, and things that are, aren't necessarily, um, that you don't want necessarily to be out there for anyone to read, right? So you, you, don't, you don't want, those, those are things for your security team, for your, you know, things to help your CISO um, fall asleep. Um, you know, they're in, in, in less about, um, um, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, shoving them into deployments or something for auditing. I think, um, uh, yeah, I, I, I personally, I, I'm with you, Dan. I, I kind of be like, Ugh, I, I don't think, I, I don't think a CISO would want something like that because it has like sensitive information and by design it has sensitive information. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's also a size issue because. S bombs mm -hmm. can be quite large when they're complete. Yep. I mean, when you have all the components accounted for, um, because even like a lot of S bomb examples will have information on each class in yes. a C application, and there's like 700 classes, you know, and that's before you even get to like the other binaries components that are involved. So they can be quite long. So uh, I don't love the idea of sticking them into manifest. Um, the, the way that I would probably prefer to approach it, and then I actually want to talk about something in the, in the community as well, mm -hmm. would be to do something. So just for some of you, a lot of you are CodeFresh users, so you'll recognize this screen. This is an image view, right? So the, I'm looking at this specific image, this specific version. It's giving me all my metadata. I would attach an SBOM here because then I've attached it to the artifact, and that's going to be pulled you know, everywhere that it goes, and I'm going to be able to see where it's deployed and whatever, and... Um, you know, I can, I can, uh, check versions and, and things like that between each other. So that feels like more like a good natural place to attach that as a sort of metadata, because you don't like, I, 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 well, actually let's, let's take again from the security perspective. Okay. So, um, let's say I'm a malicious actor. I can generate a bad S bomb and I, uh, you know, I'm get, I, I gain access to your cluster. So that means like, you know, game game is kind of already over. <laughs> I can, over, yeah. I can just put a fake, I don't, I can update an image and update manifests and not touch the S bomb. Right. So you need a signing function here, mm -hmm. like a cryptographic signature function. So this is where a tool like, um, cosine comes into place where I can say, Hey, I'm going to, uh, not only do cosine, to have provenance on this image. So I know where it came from. I'm also going to have a signature, uh, an attestation. So you have mm -hmm. the con concept of attestations that says, and this is where the S bomb can be found. And it wouldn't necessarily contain the whole S bomb, but it would just have a pointer to where it is. So it's still 
you know, it should be immutable, but, uh, yeah. you know, I, I would, I don't think you could inject it all as an attestation or anything. Um, but this is, this is something that I think is maybe something we'll see kind of in the future as a more mm -hmm. default practice, because I think it's more of a metadata problem than it is a yeah. like injection issue. Yeah. And, and I think, uh, and going off to your point, right? Like you, I'm glad you mentioned co uh, cosine, all right? So it's like sign, I mean, cosine, but um, just signing um, in, in, um, in general is gonna become very important because it is possible for an attacker to inject something and for your S bomb for, and for it to have the same SHA, right? So like it, it's, you know, so like you're looking at it, I'm like, oh, the SHA matches, you know, that means it's, it's fine, right? No one's tempered with. Uh, maybe not necessarily, right? Like, you, you, yeah. What, you know. Wait, what's the scenario? So, wait, you're saying they would modify an image, but they would be able to generate the same SHA? Yeah. So, like, if you, um, at, not the image. So, like, it at at code build time, right? So, like, if if um, you know, the uh, SHA is just a um, you know, a checksum, right? And so it's just bytes and and checksum. So it's possible to inject something and to have the same shot come out in when you're coding right on, on at code time like right so like if someone were to you know generate you know log a new log for j vulnerability and you inject that um and it comes out with the same shot um it's it's possible you know that is also a big problem which wait I think how would it come out with the same shot because you've modified the bytecode so the the SHA would have to be different, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I, like I we're talking about that... generating a collision, which is like crazy yeah, hard. So, yeah. So this is yeah, and and, and it is. So I, I need to find an example. Uh, there was an example of it happening. I need to find it, um, and uh, I'll post it on Twitter later. Um, yeah, it, please. It, it, yeah, it it's um, and it's it's You're scary. Like Some of my saying, foundations yeah. of reality. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's like so signing becomes important only because it's like then you know that you're like, I can attest. Um, someone mentioned the solar wind attack. I actually never, oops, cancel. I don't want to reload the page. Um, um, uh, actually looked into the, the solar winds attack. My, um, my understanding is there was a supply chain issue yeah. that, they, that they injected code uh, that they had relied on. And so, the, you know, as a strategy, they had basically figured out a way to compromise some sort of upstream package that then gave them access. But I think it was a targeted attack. Yeah, uh, it was targeted from what I understand. And this actually goes to the S bombs being public information. You don't necessarily want that because it just tells everybody what you're using. So they say, oh, well, this is where I should look for my vulnerabilities. This is where I'm going to focus my attention. Now, of course, we yeah. do this in the open source world because mm -hmm. we focus not on security through obscurity, but in security through uh through transparency and getting everybody to yeah. come in and tell us what's wrong and, and improve it but uh in the case of you know running your actual systems you don't necessarily want to share those kinds of things so those s bombs probably shouldn't be public they should probably be private and considered yeah yeah uh, it's it's my sensitive information yeah that's kind of uh kind of like the the robots.txt file i don't know maybe dating myself i don't know if you remember the robots.txt file yeah. it's like don't don't index don't index these directories because you know you don't want them indexed. It's like, oh, yeah. okay. Don't index so flash secret. Everybody's like, oh, what's oh, secret? so yeah, exactly. I'm like, okay, well, let me look there because you know you don't want me to. You don't want people indexing that. Um, I think that was kind of like what the solar wind thing was a, a little bit about. It's like you know, no know, knowing where to go because it was public sort of thing. Um, mm. So um, yeah, so, maybe, yeah, maybe somebody mm. in the comments will tell us how they did the solar winds a a attack because I I'm actually less familiar with it. We did have somebody uh, in ArgoCon who gave a mm -hmm. great talk where they're running thousands of windmills in Europe, and when the Ukraine war started, Russia cybersecurity took down 6,500 windmills with uh, with attacks, and so now they're moving to GitOps. They're moving to Argo CD because it's going to allow them to maintain state visibility. And this oh, is actually another point, and it kind of ties into the GitOps side of the equation. When it comes to maintaining the state, well, if somebody were to inject, let's say they gained access to production and they modified an image or whatever, SBOMs wouldn't necessarily help you with that. Get Argo CD, GitOps, that definitely would help you. It, it would pick that up right away. It would be an out-of-phase change. It's not what's in Git. And it would, yep. uh, assuming you have auto healing turned on, 
would automatically get overwritten. And so you can imagine a scenario where attackers just trying to inject stuff and it's, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah they're injecting, but then it's getting overwritten immediately. And, uh, you know, that's not a, it's not a great situation. They still got access to your cluster. It's still bad. But yeah. in terms of like security, isn't, uh, like you said, it's not a one thing. It's a bunch of layers of moat mm -hmm. and, uh, if you're attacking somebody, then you think, okay, where are they vulnerable? Can I inject some software here? Can I gain access to a developer machine and maybe get something committed into code? That's going to be my, you know, the safest way for me to do it, but it's going to be harder for me to do. Is there a way I can gain access? Is there, are there endpoints exposed? You know, all of these things, they have to be working in concert. So on the software supply chain, SBOM feels like a good starting point, just yeah. in terms of awareness of what's happening, but it definitely doesn't feel like, Oh, I've got S bombs. Check security done. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's uh, like you said. It's 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 another layer of the moat, right? It's another um, S bombs. Really, um, I, I've asked, um, I've asked, like, how would you actually use S bombs? And like, most people have a hard time, like, unless they are like have a, a background in security, have a hard time answering that. They have a hard time mm -hmm. answering. Okay, like, how would I? Why is it important? Why would I? And it's like it's just, like you said. It's just like another you know, another tool in the toolbox, right? In, in terms of, uh, in terms of security. And like I said, since we're being dragged left, we should all like start becoming familiar with all these things. Um, and, um, an another thing, um, that I kind of want to talk about, but let's, let's see what here, what, um, yeah. So he like, was, he was say. saying that their build system was compromised and that's what started injecting malicious software that went into and compromised machines. Obviously they weren't code fresh users, Clearly, yeah, yeah. Clearly not. yeah. Um, but uh, in terms of the die, the digest and the providence, so the digest would change from release to release, of course, because it's cryptographically yeah. ah, generated. Yes. So yeah. it have a it would have a new signature, but it would still have providence verified from SolarWind. So you would have a certain level of trust for it. So yeah, you know, verifying providence also not a silver bullet. Mm -hmm. Of course, verifying providence is going to mean that now they have to compromise something that you're consuming versus just uh, somehow injecting to pull their own binaries or whatever. Um, so their, their attack surface is going to be harder if you're verifying yeah. provenance, but it's not going to go away because they're still, you know, you're consuming software for somewhere. Yeah. And, um, and so the the next the next thing kind of like what I wanted to talk about and and, and, and touch yeah. on is like CVEs, right? And how um and how 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 much of a pain a CVE is. Um because like with when a CVE comes out, it's almost like um you know, you're you're following a thread to another thread to another thread to another thread and trying to um um I guess triage like the issue from like okay I have my S bomb I have my CVE like to trying to see like which CVE affects which component of which S bomb is it's kind of a pain and so there's been something I've been following for a little bit called the vulnerability exportability exchange right or VEX mm. as they like to call it um, and uh, this was in twenty ooh this was I want to say this was fairly recent, but I mean, I guess I'm dating myself. It depends how you say recent. I think it was in 2019, 2018, um, when that the standard came out. Um, uh, if, if anyone wants to look it up, if you look it up, OpenVex, OpenVEX. OpenVex, um, okay. Yeah, there's some good information on there. Um, and uh, this is basically a machine-readable um, CVE um, format. Right, because before it it was kind of like to your point, Dan, where you're talking about like um, an S bomb can technically just be a text file with information. But like, how useful is that if you are trying to um, you know triage something or, or trying to run like a report on something? Um, and so um, what's what's really cool about Vex is now we have like a machine readable format of of uh, of vulnerabilities, and so. Um, What's really, really cool is that um, VEX allows you to, um, you know, quickly triage like, okay, like, you know, what, you know, what, um, what in my S bomb has what vulnerability, right? So now, now they, now you have like kind of like two pieces of information of like, sh you know, should I, um, you know, 
do I have a vulnerability? Should I care about that vulnerability in my environment? Mm. What are my transitive vulnerabilities? Um, you know, and how do those relate to like what I'm building, like what I have, like, you know, a dependency that I'm using may not have a vulnerability, but it's dependency may have vulnerability, right? You have like a transitive vulnerability where it's like, oh, okay, maybe not, um, you know, the package, the dependency I'm using may not have it, but it's using a dependency. Well, like, am I affected because am I even using that function? Am I right? Like, so kind of like a lot of this information and trying to kind of, you know, you know, match these things up, I think it's going to get easier, um, with things like VEX. Um, so I think, I think VEX is going to become also like, like, like you said, like co like, you know, signatures, right. Signing your stuff, getting S bombs, um, um, that's, you know, going to be in your tool belt, you know, being able to digest VEX information, um, is also going to be an important uh, part in your security practices. Um, you know, as, as these things evolve. Yeah. The, so th this actually brings up a point that I always tell people, <laughs> uh, I'm like, Hey, is your software secure? And they're like, yeah, we've got pretty good security. We do this, we do that. And the other things and I say, okay, that's great. You're shipping insecure software right now. You're shipping yeah. vulnerabilities. Now, you don't know about it yet because they haven't been discovered yet. So they're Schrodinger's vulnerabilities. But at some mm -hmm. point, there's going to be a CVE, and it's going to affect some component of your of your software spe stack, and it may or may not be exploitable. There, there are a lot of minor CVEs that are that you'll catch just because it's some issue that's that's deep into the container, that's deep into the kernel somewhere, that is really not exploitable in any way. And mm -hmm. so those, you know, you have to have some some intelligence to think about how critical it is to patch those and how quickly you do it. But uh, the, that really actually goes to the other side of the equation that I think is really important from the SBOM perspective, which is we've been talking about it from a security standpoint, but developer velocity is maybe an even more important standpoint, not because mm -hmm. you should sacrifice security for developer velocity, but because you can't be secure without developer velocity. Like if you're not yes. able to make changes quickly and deploy quickly. them, it doesn't matter because vulnerabilities already exist in your software. How quickly can you patch those? Do yeah. you have a good build system that's going to automatically build? Can you automatically be alerted? Uh, can you automatically deploy and have it go out to all the places that it needs to be taken care of? Because that time window is the window in which attackers could, they, they learn about the vulnerability, they start working on an exploit. And if it takes you three years, to get that new that patch out then you're you're vulnerable for three years and three so years. that's that's how a lot of attacks most attacks that have 99 percent attacks uh the solar winds is, is is kind of an interesting example but 99 percent of software hacks are known vulnerabilities in unpatched software yes right yeah so velocity developer velocity is actually the kind of the most critical in my view component of this um going to you know, some of the, like with VEX, you've got another standard to, to try to help you. Uh, GitHub, we mentioned, has the ability to check and generate S-bombs automatically, but I don't think it goes into the container, so it doesn't examine. The, so that's useful if you're delivering a binary, like, a, like you're just delivering, you know, uh, some executable. But if you're delivering a container, there's a whole other side of the equation here. And there is a tool from Docker that they announced uh, not too long ago, I think it's still experimental. Let me pull it up. It's uh, Docker S bomb, and um, mm -hmm. this basically. Oh, yeah. I heard about this. Yeah, yeah. So it's a it's a command you can run, and it will generate a an S bomb, and I think it will do an SPDX. Oh yeah, and uh, Cyclone DX, um, and then also GitHub formats even. So you can generate it in any of these formats, and it will find all of the the components that are associated so i don't know how deep this goes again because you know does it just tell me yeah this is a container <laughs> or does it tell yeah. me like hey here's everything that's going on in this container um and i i have noticed that security scanners tend to be very good like we use sneak uh a lot of people use aqua uh of course there's a free one out there that anais works on called yeah. um what is it called? Uh, it's from Aqua, right? There's a yeah. Oh, the, the, the the I forget. Yeah, I forget what it's called. I added it to a pipeline the other day. 
gonna drive me nuts. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I think I saw that stream. Like you literally, you just like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like trying to remember what it was called. And, uh, well, it, it's funny. It's, it's funny. Oh, Trivi, 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 Trivi. That's what it is. Yeah. 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 Um, Trivi scan. That's what it was. And we, you know, what's it, it's kind of funny. Like you can like, enjoy, like you can put the stuff in your pipeline and like, like sort of forget about it. Right. Cause it's, yeah. <laughs> cause it's like, all right, cool. Like it's, it's, it's in there. Um, but, uh, but the, uh, but I think you have a very good point in terms of like velocity and, um, you know, shifting left doesn't necessarily mean that, um, you know, all, all, you know, all the responsibility now falls on, on, on the developer. It's more like, all right, how fast can we get these, like, like less about getting, well, I mean, as a side effect about getting changes and features in, but also like security updates how fast can we get those as well like speeding up the velocity of developers has that side of, you know has has a, has a many positive side effects um and you know having uh um uh, you know um a platform right like you know kind of like like codefresh having that platform that kind of has that end to end where you have the visualization um you know is is very uh you know not only helps with like developers just kind of just like push code out but that that also also patches right also security patches it, like you know that's that side effect as well it's not just about being first to market or you know yeah. accelerating your developer but also like oh you know we're, we're vulnerable we don't want to be vulnerable let's let's get those out yeah our our approach at codefresh so i mean <laughs> robert has brought up he's like He's like, guys, if you're gonna to try to cover all of the tools, yeah, yeah, exactly. Bombs, <laughs> it, gonna be we're gonna need we're gonna need a few a more streams. Yeah, stream. yeah. <laughs> um, the approach that we've had at CodeFresh has been, you know, let's we'll we'll integrate with that whatever S bombs, so you can just generate your S bombs, attach them to a container, attach it to the image. It's gonna be traceable because mm -hmm. when I think about um, day to day productivity, the issue that that we have is more about helping people have context about software changes because those are the things that are potentially causing regressions and they're trying to debug. So if I'm looking at my GitOps application view and I'm saying, okay, I had some regressions start at 10 a.m. this morning. I want to show I want to see every deployment that happened around 10 a.m. And I want to know, you know, what gear tickets were being worked on, who was working on it, where are the PRs that were involved, because that's going to help me fix it. From an S bomb perspective, having that information available and traceable is is useful more, again, for remediation. It's not necessarily going to make me more productive on day one, and it's not necessarily going to make me more secure on day one. Mm -hmm. It is going to help me do some remediation later. But again, I don't know. I mean, am I am I speaking out of school by saying I think I would rather have a security scanning tool than um, if I had to pick one? Okay, so the Sophie's yeah. Choice kind of situation, it's a false dichotomy. If I had to pick one, I think I would rather have a security scanner because it's just going to flag, you know, CVEs for me uh, than than just the S bomb generator. Yeah, yeah. So and uh, and I think, I think it's all related, right? I think the um, um, and it's not just like in a particular point of your build process. I think it's just going to have to be integrated, just kind of like. In DevOps, right? Like we just kind of just integrated everything with everything, um, and you know, not only not only at build time, right, but also at runtime, but now also at code time. Like we, you, we, you, you need to be be able to inject different things, um, um, you know, like scanning, you know, at build time, scanning the container after it's built, scanning at runtime to make sure that like if a new vulnerability is found, like you want to know about that like soon soon um so like not not just and not just at code time not just at build time not just that you know in in you know um after the container is built but also like when it's running in my environment i want to know if when, like you said you are running insecure software it's just like when you know about it when something's discovered you know you want that flag you'd be like oh okay like we have something in production that is um that is that is i think critical i think that's where like a lot of these um as Robert said, a lot of these companies have started popping up, right? Like, like uh, you know, like like Aqua, right? Or uh, yeah. like Stack Rocks, I mean, formerly Stack Rocks. Now, you know, Red Hat has uh, ACS. As Is part Black of that. Duck still around? Didn't they get bought? Yeah, bought them. Yeah, I think I think Black Duck. 
is it still around? I don't know. Someone can say that in the in the chat if you know if they got. It. I, I mean, I've heard of Black Duck as well. Like some kind of these like kind of like runtime scanners. Um, and so uh, you know because those that's critical. Khalid says yes, but does it use AI? Yeah, does it use AI? Yes, exactly. Don't worry, it, is, it uses machine learning to make up vulnerabilities. That, yeah, you know <laughs> yeah. why not? I, I think we actually will. I mean, this is actually a good point. The discovery of CVEs, I expect, is going to increase dramatically because we can throw AI at just, hey, sit and just read this code all day and just try to try to find exploits and give me a workable exploit. And yeah. um, somebody's going to set up, you know, a great way for it to automatically test exploits. And mm. I suspect that we'll see a lot more CVEs coming out because of this. And I know that there's a lot of, you know, state actors who are yes. really focused on this and they're not necessarily going to share those CVEs when they yeah, discover Yeah, exactly. Them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that kind of like the good and bad, right, of AI or machine learning as, as we get to some of this. It's like, oh, I can use it to um, to discover CVEs. And it's like, okay, well, I may not divulge that, right? <laughs> yeah. Right? So well, it's, it's yeah. you know, every technology has positive use cases and destructive use cases. Absolutely, and you, and absolutely. There's never been a way to unlock the technology while keeping the other side closed we figured out how to do internal combustion and it works mm -hmm. just as well for tanks as it does for cars and we figured yeah. out how to <laughs> split the atom and it works great for generating electricity and it works great for blowing stuff up 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 and yeah it, yeah you know, it's it's, just, it's, <laughs> there's no i think no getting around yeah it. there's no well, i mean yeah it's exactly it's like you know um i think also kind of like you mentioned earlier about open source i think that that's uh, I think the the big, um, um, the the biggest proponent of being something open source is like there's so many eyes on it. It's really hard. It really is hard to sneak something through. I mean, not saying it's impossible. Everything is possible, but it's really hard to like sneak something through because like there's there's a lot of eyes on it. Yeah, so, there's um, there's a tr there's a path. There's a trail of custody. There's there's a git yes. commit. There's you know it's it's hard to just uh, inject something and. And this is another reason why when in your build systems and in your module dependencies, it's good to tie to a specific version, right? Not mm -hmm. just because it gives you reproducibility, but also that means it's a conscious effort to change versions. And then, okay, at what point did they compromise a version? You know, like you have some level of protection there. Um, another... Well, actually, let's let's shift, let's shift back to S1 because we're getting a little more general security. Yeah. Something yeah, yeah. that... Um, Kind of going back to uh, a question that somebody gave earlier about where should these S-bombs live? And so we talked about, well, there are some people who want to push them into config maps. And I have, like I mentioned, a, a, an allergic reaction to that. I, I, I'm revolted by the idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we talked about maybe attaching them on, onto the image, you know, a la CodeFresh style, uh, or having them sitting in GitHub repos or, or attached to other places. Or um, OCI, right? Like you can you can shove them in into OCI uh, registry for sure. I that's mean, that, actually that's... exactly where I wanted to go. So uh, with OCI, what what's the opportunity there? Yeah. So like with with OCI, what's really cool about that is that it can you know the S bomb can live like side by side with like the payload, and 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 also like and also the VEX information as well. Like if you want to like start putting up like the information about, um, um, you know maybe make it easier for triage just when when something comes up it's like okay like you know in my you know which component is vulnerable to which cve you can kind of like look at your um, oci registry and it's all like kind of like bundled in so that's kind of like a big um um a, a, an awesome use case for the for the oci registry is yeah. to be able to store store them store them in there so there's there's two initiatives that uh, I'm engaged on, uh, mm -hmm. mostly Andrew Block is driving these. Andrew Block, uh, for those that don't know, is a Helm maintainer, uh, Red Hat guy who basically spends 24 hours a day traveling and yes. uh, just <laughs> spreading magic throughout the world wherever he is. But if you ever, um, if you ever look for the hashtag Travel Tales, he'll be, he'll be, he, he always tags this stuff. Dude, with number tales. one. Yeah, number one, <laughs> yes, no absolutely. problem. Yeah, uh, so he uh, he's been, uh, and I was I was chatting with him on this, and I, I still owe him some some feedback on the proposals. But 
there's two kind of things that are being worked on. One is a larger SIG app delivery initiative, which is to have some standardization around OCI packaging for Kubernetes manifests specifically. So uh, this pattern has begun to emerge and it's really been pushed quite a bit by Flux folks, um, which is basically you should generate your manifests or your customizations or your home chart, and then you should put them into an OCI bundle and then have that OCI bundle be the source of truth because it's versioned and immutable. It meets the standards for GitOps. And uh, then you kind of have it, you, you kind of view your Kubernetes manifests as an artifact uh, that, is, mm -hmm. that is defined and, and set. And then you can attach on things like your S-bombs. You can do a cosine on the entire package. Uh, you, can, you can have cryptographic um, you know, signing in providence for the entirety of all of those components, not just for the images, not just for these other things. And that does open up the door for verification by a, a tool like Argo CD. Now, right now, Argo CD will let you use OCI Helm registries so Helm registries, you can do Helm, but you can't do OCI random manifest. You can't do OCI customize. And there's no components today that would necessarily check for verification within Argo CD. You would need a secondary tool like Kyverno or mm -hmm. OPA Gatekeeper, but those can really only check signatures on binaries. They can't really check them on manifests because there's not a standard for that. So it does feel like there's some work to be done there to streamline this stuff so that those S bombs could be consumed and verified. The uh, provenance can be consumed and verified for the entire manifest bundle. And that is a proposal that we're working on in Argo CD right now to have that kind of capability. Yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. Right. So that's, that's something um, like you said, like you needed to use like a third party tool or kind of something like after the fact would be cool to be able to um, do that at, you know, at, I don't want to say runtime, at deploy time, um, at, you know, it, you know, when Argo attempts to try to um, deploy some of those, um, it'd be really cool to kind of verify some of that before it even touches the cluster, right? So there was like, there's tools that do it after, like you said, like Kyverno, like you, you, you actually, Dan, um, if you guys want to look up on YouTube, did a great, great, uh, great demo about Kyverno and Argo CD. I think it was for the first ArgoCon. Uh, so that ch yeah. great talk, by the way. So there, you know, but it'd be really, really cool to do that, like even before it touches the cluster, like even before it applies to it. So um, that's gonna be really great to follow. Yeah, the uh, the the verification side of this stuff is is interesting, and um, you know, it works pretty well today. But verifying like a manifest bundle, like an OCI bundle. Mm -hmm. I think would be the next step because it would it would actually solve all of the potential downstreams. Getting getting an injection webhook off of pods and checking those, I mean that that gets you ninety nine percent of the gig right there because yeah. hey, if you can't inject a binary, like what the heck are you even gonna do? Like you're gonna inject a config map? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have fun. Yeah. What are you gonna do yeah. with it? <laughs> Nothing yeah. happens with it. <laughs> Um, I mean, you could, uh, there's, there's probably some intelligence there that, um, you could do something, but, uh, Robert brings up, um, Robert, of course, for those that don't know is, is uh, another maintainer on the GitOps, uh, open GitOps project with Christian and I, and, and a few others. And, um, he's working on getting an artifacts working group up and running, uh, focused. I, and I think Robert, that is on for the GitOps working group that you're doing this, um, that would be focused on. Yeah, S bombs. How do we attach these things? How, how is there some standardization around artifact management that we can do? And technically today, the GitOps standard, you can use an artifact registry like an OCI registry as a source of truth. It wouldn't necessarily have to be Git because it is versioned and it is immutable. That's all you needed, right? So uh, yeah. it definitely does play into the GitOps. Um, the the only issue is is how much of state you can manage there uh, in terms of like can I get all my Kubernetes manifests in there? And then are those being applied properly? And right now you could do a um, config management plugin in Argo CD to custom build this, but uh, I think we're going to need some official support. I think we need to support it yeah, directly. Yeah, abs absolutely, absolutely. It's an oh, tag, yeah, app, tag delivery. app delivery. Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, yeah. It, so I, I always wonder what, um, what, 
what uh what sig is robert not a part of that's the that's, that's, that, <laughs> i think that's a shorter yeah because i always see him of yeah. sigs that i haven't seen him in it's a sig, oh, sig, sig. <laughs> sigs a sig of sigs that's right he doesn't have time for that it's a waste of his time it's a federation of sigs yeah uh -huh. sig federation <laughs> sig federation for sure um so uh with with this uh executive order coming in obviously there's going to be a higher demand and, and, and i think you mentioned that there'll be sort of a, a trickle down effect so government agencies are going to have to start using this which means they're going to start demanding it which means the private market that's feeding them is going to have to start delivering it for those yep. that aren't del aren't delivering it already um i haven't seen the agitation you know start yet from people mm -hmm. but once these laws go through and it seems highly likely that these laws would also go through um, it's going to come up and uh, and going to be something that everybody has to wrap their head around. Luckily, there are quite a few tools and there are quite a few ways to to skin this cat, so to speak, um, so he, because of where you can generate the S-bombs. Yeah, no, for sure. And it's like it, and it's ever evolving and it's always something like, um, you know, something we like all of us, right, need need to kind of like keep keep an eye on. Like it, it wasn't too. Uh, it, there was a time where like you can be a sysadmin without knowing how to code, but it evolved to the point where it's like, you need to code. Like you just need to like, you know, sysadmin started learning like Python to do some automation and then, you know, and then to, you know, uh, you know, DevOps SRE folks need to know, you know, the, the language they're supporting. S similar thing is happening right with security like now it's like before it's kind of was like a process over there it was like a group over there but now it's like okay like i we need to start thinking about this we need to start like kind of like not it, it is no longer like over there right that's coming closer it's we're being dragged there as i as i like to say i need to get a t-shirt made drag left we're being yeah, dragged drag, left, so. <laughs> drag, drag left drag me to the left uh with <laughs> With the liability component, this is something else that you mentioned earlier. We didn't double click on, but I wanted to double click on this. You mentioned mm -hmm. that uh, you expect there's going to be some liability uh, mm -hmm. that people are going to carry for software that they ship. Is this going to is this going to apply to open source projects? Because it's like, hey, liability, like sue the open source project for much money as you want. It don't have none. It don't have it don't have money. Yeah. See, I don't know what what um um you know. I think. It's it's even evolving right in the Senate, right? It's in committee right now, but uh, I, I just wonder what that liability means, right, for for companies and how and what it, how it affects open source, right? There's a lot of companies that that use open source. Red Hat, Codefresh, we all contribute to open source. Does this mean that if yeah. we contribute to open source, we're gonna have to pay? Because yeah. like, I mean, open source would just be dead tomorrow. Yeah, it, exactly. Well, like like if if Dan, I mean, unknowingly, right? Like like if you if you contribute some code to Argo and then um, there's a vulnerability in that code and this, uh, you know, financial organization uses Argo and is exploited. Is Dan now liable? Like, where's that right. liability, right? Like that's kind of, that's, I, I'm, I'm wondering where, um, you know, uh, where, where that liability um, comes into play with, you know, how the, you know, especially with the US government wanting to hold companies liable um, or at least responsible for uh, cybersecurity um, 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 attacks, right? Yeah, or, um, or what about uh, situations like uh, Heartbleed was a whole new class of vulnerabilities discovered because of the way that primarily Intel processors were handling uh, yes. look-ahead code execution, and there were, there were ways to basically get in at the processor level. What if I contributed code that is exploitable by Heartbleed but before Heartbleed was discovered. Offered. Now who yeah. owns the liability? I think it's a really hard thing to legislate. And anytime I, I, I tune into those congressional hearings, it's people not having any clue about what is even happening in the software world. And it's yeah. very distressing. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's exactly, I mean, and on the surface, it sounds like, like it sounds, oh yeah. But like, once you get, like you said, devil's in the details, right? Like once you start digging down, it's like, this is a little bit more complex than just like, you know, um, you know, oh, U.S. government wants to hold companies liable for bad cybersecurity practices. That on the surface, that sounds great. Um, but I but like I, I just wonder how that translate. Like, what does that actually mean? Right. Like and how 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 deep does uh, you know, how many turtles do you need to go down? Right. Because well, it's like, you know, like <laughs> actually, actually S-bomb related uh, in yeah. the physical world. 
Uh, there was recently a law I was reading about that said that you have to have a declaration of zero sesame seeds. Um, mm -hmm. And if you, if you, you can't say like, as usually stuff says like may contain nuts when they're yeah. like, we don't think it has nuts in it, but like, I don't know, man, like if some wafted in, in the air, when we were building, making this food. And so they said, you can't do that anymore. We're not going to let you get away with that. So sesame seed, you have to have a minimum amount or you zero and you have to guarantee zero or you're going to carry liability. And yeah. so uh, all the companies that couldn't guarantee zero, because it's actually pretty complex and difficult uh, in yeah. food industry to do that. They all started adding sesame seeds to their food. So yeah. that oh, so to make they it, could yeah. guarantee the minimum. And so the situation, if you're allergic to sesame seeds is like, Oh, it almost got worse. I'm like way more in danger than I yeah. was before <laughs> because uh, all these foods are going to have more sesame seed in them. So, yeah, it's uh, it's tricky to write this stuff right. Are we still yeah. giving grief to that? Uh, I don't remember who that senator was who said that the Internet is a series of tubes because oh, yeah. he was I right. He said the Internet isn't yeah. a dump <laughs> yeah. truck. It's a series yeah. of tubes where tubes. you put something on it. You don't know where it's going to go. And I thought. We're, we made fun of that guy for calling it a series of tubes, but actually, I think his analogy kind of holds up pretty well. No, I no, I think I I, I think so. I mean, I think it's, it was. Um, uh, I I always think of that as well as like we kind of make fun of that, but it's like I think it was like he was trying to like create an analogy that like most people would understand, and yeah. I think that was actually a pretty good job, right? He was talking um, to a lot of people who yeah. didn't have any engineering yeah, experience or yeah. knowledge about how the internet works. I don't know. So like yeah, and like yeah, well, one day someone's gonna watch this recording and they're gonna make fun of me for comparing S bombs to the, an ingredient list in a can of uh, pasta sauce. <laughs> so it's gonna be like, oh, did you hear him? He said it was a, a uh, ingredient list on in a can of pasta sauce, and I'm like, I'm just trying to <laughs> generalize it. Yeah. So um, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Yeah. No, I I think it's important, and uh, especially like the difficulty of creating s bombs it, the the barrier is pretty low because low, there are yeah. so many tools to do it and doing it at your ci cd runtime can can resolve this and then you know having the security security scanning happen mm -hmm. i have to ask uh dan uh what's his name uh lorenic was was trash talking security scanners on twitter the other day so i'm going to find out from him why he doesn't yeah. like them there was maybe yeah. it's a false sense of security i don't know Oh yeah, may maybe maybe it's like the can of the can of uh, sand, right? Can of dirt or jar of dirt, as 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 I like to um, uh, compare it to. Like a lot of people are holding it like a can of dirt, and like it sh should be more like, yeah, I'm like oh no, this is part of a secure, like a larger security practice. Yeah, part of our strategy, uh, right? Part of our strategy, like scanners, right? Scanners by itself also maybe a jar of dirt to people, uh, but it's like a part of a bigger strategy. It's not it's not the tool. It's it's the 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 entire you know platform. Uh, or your entire practice and how you use the tool. Um, there was we, there was a cool talk on, in, in KubeCon that um, I need to find it because I saw someone tweeting about it. I'm like, I need to like now watch the recording about, um, it was kind of like a hack hackathon sort of thing where they tried to trick scanners into, um, and so it, and I'm like, oh, interesting. I, I just wonder how that went. So I don't know if, if any of you watching have seen that, uh, can maybe link me on, on Twitter. Um, yeah, get that link out, <laughs> folks, if you know what he's talking about. That sounds interesting. Uh, I, I think in the meantime, we would be remiss if we didn't mention Salsa. Uh, this That's is right. a an emerging standard. It's not uh, complete mm -hmm. yet, um, but it provides uh, basically a supply chain checklist. And uh, a lot of the folks at ChainGuard, I think, worked on this. But we recently... Uh, Argo CD, Argo CD, yeah, became that's right. I think the first project in the CNCF to reach Salsa, Salsa 3. level three. Um, we announced it at KubeCon, and it basically has all these different attestation uh, and formatting things that are required. Now, I don't remember that S bombs were are part of this standard. Am I wrong? I don't think they are. Um, the, the... I don't think it is. No, wait. Uh, bypass code to compromise system. Blah, 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 blah. I don't think so. S bomb good. S bomb good. Beer. Well, they they use the ingredient oh, yeah. list. Uh, analogy, yeah, the ingredient so. list. Yes, that's right. There you go. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> um. Yeah. 
so that's um yeah and there was a lot of work put into that so kudos mm. to um you know the the argo project being able to um you know reach lost salsa level salsa level three which is pretty high i think government uses salsa i think the the next one is four i think I think that's the highest. One so yeah, anything. actually, uh, there's not going to be a four. So there is, there is right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but oh, here we go. These are security levels. So no. um, oh, I think they might have even already removed it. But oh, they already removed it. Four, yeah, there was a four. Yeah, it had a lot of things that were not practical, generally no. possible, and so yeah. they the the word that I heard was that they were going to remove it and have those things be kind of optional like add-ons that you could do yeah. um, because everybody kind of, you know, for, everybody does the same thing. They, they look at a standard that has levels. They look at the one of the farthest to the right and they say, that's the one we have to do. And it was yeah, like, yeah. well, these, these last ones are nice. They're not nice necessarily have, as yeah. critical. Uh, so getting to level three is really good, but um, yeah, they pulled back on that. Oh yeah. Salsa 1.0. Oh, see, Some days ago, that's right. Half yeah. Bring in the, bring in the news. Bringing the news. Yeah, 1.0 is brand new. Okay, that's what I was just thinking. So I was just looking at this and I was thinking, hey, this looks different than when I was on here like a week ago. So they just released Salsa 1.0, and which does not include a level four. Level four. Okay, that's maybe that's why I was. I was like, I thought that was a four. Okay, cool. Yeah, Salsa levels one through three now. Okay, so um, all right. So I think uh, we've we've demystified uh s bombs quite a bit if you if you join the stream and you've never heard of them you're unfamiliar with them um you're at least understand what they are how they're generated places that you could store them so uh and some of the information background about what's coming in terms of legislation to enforce this stuff so it yep. is important to get people on board um <laughs> robert <laughs> is is having a spicy salsa fresh salsa fresh salsa yes yeah, right <laughs> Um, so, um, is there anything else in S bombs that we're missing Christian or have we covered it? I, I think, um, for, um, at least for, for kind of like demystifying or at least getting kind of like a high level. Um, I think this is good, good place to start. I think the only other thing is like this stuff is just like evolving still. Um, and, uh, I'd be really interested to see where, where it ends up. Um, you know, not, you know, when it starts rolling out, right. When people actually start using this in production, um not that people aren't but like more and more us normal folk right start using it um, <laughs> um in production so we'll give a second for for people to come with any additional questions they have if you have any questions uh i'm seeing a lot of discussion on linkedin um youtube's been relatively quiet for a little bit uh and uh, i am seeing comments from twitch if you're posting those um i think on twitter uh, it doesn't stream in the comments, so I've been trying to look at it, and um, <laughs> I see Kyverno is chatting about us. So that's nice. Oh, but, nice. <laughs> uh, but you know, as we as we kind of wind down on this topic, um, you know, re, re resetting that expectation of s bombs aren't going to make you secure. They're a step that you should follow yep. uh, because it's going to give you clarity and visibility into what's going on, and it is really important to not view containers as a black box, right? You want to know what's in them. Uh, and that's pretty critical. Definitely security scanner are going to be important in the future, probably tying it with OCI. It seems like something that we're going to be able to do and, and having some kind of standardization around verifying that. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of changes that are coming from a GitOps perspective, from an Argo perspective, mm -hmm. from a software delivery perspective. And in the meantime, the easiest thing you can do is like grab your CI CD system, add a step, you know, if you're using CodeFresh, it's very easy, but add a step to to generate S bombs and and attach it onto your image or or attach it onto your build information so that um, people can look this stuff up. We will, we are going to probably need some sort of index system, you know, uh, so that it's not just attached in a one way, but in a searchable way across yeah. all. So you can figure out what's going on, you know, find all your impacted versions and and whatnot. And, and there's I'm sure there's probably some tool out there that does that that I'm not aware of at this point. Um, so, uh, Christian, uh, what do we have to plug? Uh, you've got GitOpsCon coming up. People can find you there in Vancouver. You've yeah. got more GitOps Guide to the Galaxy episodes coming soon. Yeah, yeah, GitOps Guide to the Galaxy. So, if um, um, if you guys want to check out 
um, Get Off Guide to the Galaxy. That's also a stream that I that I do along with my co-host uh, Hillary. Um, that's every other Thursday, so not tomorrow, but the week after. Um, Excellent. We yeah, we have we have guests coming on. Um, uh, we're, we're having Pipe Kick coming on uh, pretty oh, soon. Oh, lovely! Great guys. So that's, Super yeah, 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 great, great guys. So if you guys ever um, want to talk about Argo workflow, run under about Argo workflows is there. Um, you can find me on Twitter and on GitHub using that that guy right there, uh, Christian H A one four. No one told me that I should pick a better name um, when I first <laughs> got Twitter, but there there I am, I, <laughs> staying on brand on both GitHub and Twitter. And uh, yeah, find me if you guys are going to GitOpsCon um, in Vancouver. I'll be there. Um, doing a keynote there. Uh, yeah, get get my book. Do you want to plug your book? Christian get my book. Wrote a great book, The Path to GitOps. Uh, yeah, totally so valuable because you focus pretty heavily on Argo CD, but you also include Flux. It's a little bit um, uh, agnostic. Yeah, you know? I focus. So. Uh, yeah, I focus on process. So, like, you know, what are the things that you need to look for when you are thinking about implementing GitOps? So, um, get that as well. Path to GitOps. Um, yeah, so, you know, you can find me there if, if you're, um, I'm probably bringing some books up to me with, um, in Vancouver. So if you want a physical copy, you can, um, and, uh, get a oh, signature said, and a picture, get a sig, get a picture. Yeah. I actually, so someone actually, um, um, uh, they, when they picked up my book, I was there and they asked me to autograph the book and they took a picture with me. I was very humbled. So, um, if you're, if you're out there um watching this somehow thank you you humbled me that was really cool um so but yes i i will pose for pictures so that's 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 not, i'm a i'm a ham so i won't be shy so all right so we posted it <laughs> we posted the links uh to your book um obviously on twitter you can see christian's name there great follow easy follow as long as he's on there and not uh off onto some other platform yes uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ever changing. <laughs> um and then uh, uh a plug from the code fresh side if you have not yet done it, go get certified. Uh, you do the GitOps certification with Argo. Um, it's fantastic. Uh, Christian helped out uh, a little bit with these certification levels. Um, yeah. And uh, we'll teach you GitOps fundamentals, GitOps at scale. And this is the world's most popular, fastest growing, and most effective GitOps training. It's very cheap, too. You can bundle them both for like 80 bucks which is yeah. an easy, easy make. And um, we'll I don't think sure there's a cheaper a certification than 80 bucks, by the way, no. for these folks out there. I don't think there's... And also, fun fact about this, this certification is very popular internal to Red Hat. Everyone takes this internal to Red Hat. It's very, very, very good. So it's it's uh, it's it's one of the, the popular ones. It's it's actually part of one of the trainings when people are onboarding um, for, for GitOps. So it's it's listed as, as one of them. So for sure, everyone check that out. And of course, uh, go check out CodeFresh, create a free account. You'll get hosted Argo CD uh, and uh, a way to manage many Argo instances, have an aggregate view of everything going on and have that traceability all throughout. So uh, with that, um, we just want to thank you all for, for joining in and uh, joining us for the GitOps The Planet episode on demystifying S-bombs. So glad that you could do that. If you have any questions following up, Please hit us up on Twitter. I'm at Today Was Awesome. Christian is at Christian A14. And of course, we're going to be at GitOpsCon. So we'll see many of you in Vancouver. And uh, we would love for you to come and say hello, say that you saw us on the stream. And we'd love to chat uh, with all of you. So with that, thanks, everybody. This has been GitOps the Planet with Christian. And I'm your host, Dan Garfield. Bye, everybody. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs>